Ross Allison, and welcome to Unknown Truth. We're standing outside a piano bar known as 88 Keys in the historic Pioneer Square area of Seattle. This area has been known for its stories of murder, suicide, and even hauntings. According to its owner, 88 Keys seems to have a lot more spirits than what they serve at the bar. And we're here to find out if there's any truth to that. It was in the year 1852 that the first white settlers set foot in this area known as Pioneer Square, located in the southwest corner of downtown Seattle and once the heart of the city. Located on 2nd Avenue is the Duncan Building, erected in 1900. It was here that Scottish immigrant George Duncan established Duncan and Sons Saddlery and Shoe Findings, which remained at this location until 1976. Since, the building has housed many restaurants, bars, and clubs, and in 2007 became the home of 88 Keys Piano and Sports Bar. psychic for a ghost. Uh, this is my latest case I have 88 keys. Um, I've been with uh, a ghost for about eight years now. I'm not getting a real sh most of the activity that I pick up is back out in the main part of the bar. I felt very strongly that there was a male energy who tends to be kind of a uh, a little bit of a joker. Um, he's amused by it all. He thinks it's amusing when he causes things to happen and people react. He's not negative by any stretch of the imagination, but he can be a bit of a prankster. Uh, I get the feeling he's from the turn of the century. Um, I'm also drawn into the corner over here where the exit sign is around by the office area. No, this area, I'm feeling somebody standing in this, in, in this this hallway area and I don't know what's in here um, it's an office if I were in this office 
I would constantly be looking out here in the hallway just to see what was here. I'd always feel like somebody was there. I think somebody does stand in this spot here. Um, I feel like he, he's there, especially if there's somebody in the office. He, would, he might knock on the door or, or just stand there and watch who's ever in the office. And if I were in the office, I would constantly have that feeling of one, wanting to look over my shoulder and seeing if somebody was standing there. When I'm here by myself, I usually close the office door, lock it, so I'm here working. I can see everything on camera, so I can tell if I'm safe. I'm ready to push 911 if I have to. And uh, it's amazing, but this happened many dozen times. I've been there working, and I hear it on the door. still gives me the shakes right now. Um, this happened more than once, and it just startles me. Like, there's nobody here. There's absolutely nobody here. Um, I have other managers that stay here now. They're working. When I first started this place, I was the only one here. But I feel there's some validity because now my the new manager, he's experienced some things and without me even sharing stories with him. I want to keep managers around. but. Uh, my name is Robert A. Bass, Jr. I run the door and store manager, part owner. I was asked to stay over one weekend to get ready for a Seahawks game, and Dina was out of town. And I decided to go back in the back and relax a little bit. And a row of glasses seemed somehow fell off the bar. So I was kind of worried. I went up and checked the bar the glasses back up. Fifteen minutes later, they fell off again. And I was getting kind of concerned what was going on with the building. Somebody was in here, so I did a search of the building, looked around, looked everywhere. Nobody in the house, nowhere to be seen. Went back, to, sat back and laid down. And all of a sudden, they went down again. So this time, I put a bar up to make sure they wouldn't fall off. They came more time, about 20 minutes later, they fell off again time for me to leave. And then I talked to Dino the next day and he was telling me that we have a ghost. When I walked in here, I was immediately drawn to the area near the bar. Um, actually, to be precise, by the coffee, the coffee station of the bar and I felt very strongly that there was a male energy there. I hear stuff back here though. I, I am hearing like Tink, tink, like glasses or bottles, like moving or, or like moving against each other or something where they're clinking. That's just an eerie feeling to me. I, I really am. I just feel eerie. But like I said, I am now a true believer. I do believe. I did at first. Everything was a myth to me. But after you get involved and you see some things, I'm waiting to see one of them. Stand up in the morning when I get up to see how game is in the Yeah, I felt like something right here kind of was, I just felt something brush against my arm that there it could have been a cobweb, but. I don't think there's any cobwebs. Actually, I'm, I'm drawn over here. Uh, in the basement area when I was down there, uh, I was drawn to the corner over, which would be below the area by 
the, the kitchen uh, below there, um, I feel like there was some, there was a heaviness there. I felt like there has been some violence there that somebody had been hurt, definitely killed. I'm getting that, that violent feeling here, like someone was hurt in this area. Um, right, th right through this area here, it seems to bleed out from that way. I don't know if the person was, somebody was hurt and it, it's definitely a male and it seems like it happened over there but I'm feeling it bleed into this area here. I'm feeling like my head area, the back of my head. I don't know if he was hit. I'm feeling like a blunt impact to the back of my head back in that area. Let me walk over there. I kind of feel sick though, that sick feeling like someone's been hurt, someone's, ugh. Once in a while we get, we get to store uh, the chairs downstairs. If we have an event here, the owner will let us store the chairs downstairs. And we had finished cleaning up. And uh, one of the fellows that helped us, he said, mind if I lay my head down here for a second? So well, we've got a lot of cleanup upstairs, no problem. Just lay your head down. When I finish up here, I gotta come get you. And about 10 minutes later, he just came darting up here, running up as white as a ghost. Will not believe what happened. Some just woke me up and said, Hey! And he said, I looked up, he was a Native American. He's telling me to get out. He's pointing me to get out of here. And uh, he looked scared. He didn't look like he was making it up. He, he must, whatever happened to him, he must be kind of, his energy is coming in and out of this area. I don't think he's permanently here, but I feel like he comes in and out. Sometimes he's picked up, sometimes he isn't. He, he must have died because I'm definitely getting a, 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 this person has passed. This is a male. This, although I don't think this guy is related to what I'm getting upstairs. Yeah, there's something different about this. This seems more violent. Up here, I'm not getting that kind of a feeling. Upstairs. Overall, there's a lot of activity here. Um, I feel like he moves the, the, the gentleman that's up here, who's not the same that I'm feeling downstairs, but the gentleman that's upstairs, he's the one that, that kind of moves around the area up in this level the most. I don't think this is related to what I'm getting here. I don't think this is related at all to the, the sick feeling, but I'm starting, I keep seeing horses. I don't know why. I'm seeing horses. No, no, I'm smelling leather. Okay, so here we go. What's with the stools? Does somebody ever sit out here? I mean, besides patrons, I mean, more like spirits. Like one of those tables, like a chair right over here. Something, I don't know, I feel like a chair like scoots or moves or somebody sits in one of these chairs, but not, not somebody living, somebody that's passed. Could have been heard or seen or or even a shadow of somebody just just for a second somebody sitting there and they're gone. Once in a while you're doing paperwork three, four o'clock in the morning in my office over here. And uh, put my head down on the stage here just to lay down a little bit, try to catch some sleep before I can uh, drive off. And Right in the middle of the, my sleep, a chair went flying across uh, the floor here. And I know it went flying, but I heard it when it landed. And it went, do, 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 do,
is about 12 feet on the ground over here. So I picked up a chair and tried to recreate the bouncing sound. These are heavy steel chairs. Try to bounce it this way, try to drop it from really high uh, altitude to try to recreate the sound. And I can't. It sounds like somebody's dribbling a chair. This, what I'm, what I'm saying is I'm picking this up as something that has happened. Um, I'm not picking up anybody sitting there right now. Uh, however, I do feel like we're being watched. I definitely feel that we do have spirits in this location. So there's a lot of layers of energy in this building. I think when we had the earthquake, they retrofitted this building and they moved some things they shut the moved. And it opened and, 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 and they let some spirits out of downtown Seattle. I did ask for protection when I came here uh, from the spirits. Uh, people may think I'm crazy, but there'd be allies that, to make enemies. I definitely feel that we do have spirits in this location. So there's a lot of layers of energy in this building. I'm now a true believer. I do believe. I did it first. But after you get involved, you see some things. I'm waiting to see one of them stand up and say hi. So do spirits roam within the walls of 88 Keys? If so, are they mischievous, out to harm, or do they simply just want to be recognized? Until next time, I'm Ross Allison for Unknown Truth.